What's up, everybody? Welcome to another one of Dave's Daily Dives, where I dig into the stock market charts of the day, give you some price targets. Got some actually pretty interesting stuff going on here with the Russell 2000 small cap index. But then after that, I give you five Zach's Rank number one strong buy stocks that are breaking out to new highs, give you some actionable trade ideas. Now, what is going on with this rainbow chart that I got going on here? This is the Russell. And here's the structure I was working off. We talk about this all the time, the August, the mid-August lows. October highs, retrace, very shallow retrace to the 23.6. And then now all of a sudden it's hitting all these targets. All these FIB extensions end up getting hit, right? And now here we are approaching the 61.8% extension of this move at 16.16, which you'll likely hit tomorrow. After that, it's 16.40 to the upside, so still plenty to go. Why did I point that out? Well, because I want to give you some upside targets on the Russell. will just give you an idea of when it might be taking a pause. Of course, long-term thesis is it's not going to take a pause anytime soon. No serious pullback unless you see some uh, major estimated revisions to the downside, but we're seeing the exact opposite, folks. We are seeing these estimates continue to tick up to the upside, so that is pretty spectacular. Okay, so that's the Russell. Then today, I think it's appropriate to talk about the NASDAQ composite because of, I mean, just look at the NASDAQ just doesn't care. I guess because it just keeps on going up and up and away, really this was all Netflix's fault. Uh, last night, Netflix, you know, reported better than expected uh, subscriber growth. As part of their earnings report, stock was up 9.9% all the way past 250. But last night, after they announced, pretty much that, that was off to the races for the Nasdaq, and uh, and you see the result here. So, all-time highs again for the Nasdaq. I know you're beginning to sound like a broken record, but um, it's just unrelenting, and uh, it just keeps going. So as far as upside price targets, it's really hard for me to draw fibs and give you price targets when it just goes straight up. Um, so really, I think the thing to do is just wait for this commodity channel index to come down a little bit and, and get yourself in a little deeper if you're not already in. Look at this little pattern, though. This is something that I see all the time on individual stocks that I just want to point out to you, specifically with the Commodity Channel Index, and this happens with stocks at their highs. I use this in Momentum Trader all the time. So here's a Commodity Channel Index bouncing around from, here's negative 100, so that's oversold. Here's positive 100, that's actually overbought. When you get up to 200, those are pretty extreme conditions. But this is my favorite sort of pattern with the CCI, is when it comes down from over 100, touches the zero line, and bounces. That's an extension pattern that I see a lot on individual stocks. Maybe we'll have one here later that we're talking about. But it also helps when it gets close to a 50-day moving average. Now, as far as the NASDAQ goes, 50 days all the way down at 69.51 with the, with the NASDAQ uh, 500 points higher than that. So runaway, breakout, melt up, whatever you want to call it, you're elbow deep in it right now, my friend. So things are looking good. Things are looking uh, very good there. One thing I did touch on real briefly in my uh, write-up today, I was looking at the dollar versus the yen and what's been happening over there. Look at the move from Election Day to mid-December. Basically 18 cents, right? Um, pretty big move, or 18% rather, move, almost 17% move. And then we've just been working inside this structure the whole time. So you do have a floor at the 61.8 retracement of this move. You got some tops that have been put in on multiple occasions at that 23.6. And just when it looks like it's starting to compress and maybe you're going to have a little bit of a buy here, I don't think so. It never compresses, right? Doesn't it always whip out a little further? So I think you're going to see some more pressure to the downside here. Now the downside in this direction, remember it's dollar versus yen on this chart. So this is yen strength. So as this comes down yen strength, 
you can expect the BOJ is only going to let that happen so much and then would intervene because that's what they do, right? And you're still in an overall downtrend here underneath the 50-day. Just something I want to touch on because if you look at yields, there's a little bit of a disconnect. Typically, they move sort of in step with each other. That's probably not the strongest statement I've ever had. Typically, they move sort of in step with each other. They have a tendency to follow each other, and it's not happening now. Yields are creeping on up, and this dollar-yen pair is starting to retreat a little bit. So keep an eye on that 108, and then uh, I bet you that that move following that is in the positive direction. Okay, as promised, five, Zach's rank. Number one, strong buy stocks that are breaking out to new highs for you. First, Kohl's. Yes, that Kohl's. I got 15 sweater vests from Kohl's. Not really. Look at this. November lows and just, just unrelenting. So basically a lot of this is the relief trade that, uh, you know, retail is not going the way of the dodo, that these retailers are still going to be around here. If you want to get in on some of this action, uh, mind the gap, my friends. So you can go long and try to chase it. Keep your stops south of the gap. But you're talking about, you know, what, 12.5%, something like that, more? 12, 12.5%, 13% off of where the price action is right now. Uh, I don't know if you want to mess with that. Um, I would wait for it to calm down just a little bit. Because, look, I mean, that's a hot breakout. And like I said on the NASDAQ, I like to see this come down to the zero line, the Commodity Channel Index. I like it to come down and flirt with the zero line just a little bit like it did before. So we kind of missed the boat here. Now I got now I got all sorts of messed up problems over here. Okay. Uh, kind of missed the boat. The trades are like uh, like D-Boy uh, says when he's talking about E-minis all the time. Trades are like buses, right? You just wait 15 minutes. There's another one coming. Same sort of scenario. We missed that. Just wait. It'll get there eventually. So that's Kohl's, ticker KSS. Then we've got Maztec, ticker MTZ. Here, look at this big candle. You get this intraday move, and then it whips down. And then this thing's sort of range-bound for several months. Finally gets up above that range, retests, and now it's, now it's moving again. Because of that, you can go long here. If you go 10% out, put your stops down here. That's kind of where you're going to get out. 50-day moving average is at 46.82. That's going to continue to creep up in the positive direction. That's Maztec, ticker MTZ. Then we've got Target for you fancy folks out there. Again, retail's not going anywhere. And uh, Amazon, yes, they're eating people's lunch, but doesn't mean we're all going out of business, right? Look at what we're getting into here. We're getting into a little bit of trouble. Up here, the November highs, that's kind of where we're at. And you see this band of volume is starting to increase here. So we are at the battle of 78, my friends. So what you can do is wait for a breakout, sort of like a buy stop up here. Wait for a breakout from the highs. You can go ahead and hold on for dear life after that. Or... You can go long here, get yourself down into this candle, down into the 73s. This is where you could stop out. Give it a, But if you gave it a little bit more room, I don't think it benefits you, right? Because I don't think it goes to 73 and reverses up. Right? I think if it breaks that level, you're going you're gonna to be in the midst of a deeper retrace, maybe even down here to the 66 level. So if you want to chase it, that's the way to play it. Target ticker T G T Union Pacific. Now we're looking at the railroads, and this should not come as a surprise given what's happening. Now again, these are all Zach's rank number one strong buy stocks. So that means there's been earning estimate revisions to the upside that are helping to push these things along, helping to justify these prices. Last time Union Pacific was in near its 50-day was October. Well, I suppose it came back again in late November, but didn't hit it. Off to the races again, starting to consolidate a little bit here in the 140s. I think I would be a little bit patient with this. See if it establishes some sort of range. If this range kind of tightens, that's one thing, but I, I, 
I would, I would think, given that it's sort of lost a little bit of steam here, that it would come down just a bit. Looking for that continuation pattern, that commodity channel index coming down to the zero line, or maybe even further. Not getting that yet. So I'd be a little bit patient here on Union Pacific, ticker UNP. The last one I got for you, good luck trying to pronounce it. Um, you could say it five different ways, and I'm going to be wrong about it. So, Zoetis, sure. Um, Z-O-E-T-I-S. So, these, this company is in the uh, veterinary um, vaccine business, pretty much. Not just for your pets, but uh, more for, you know, livestock and things like that. Look at this move, though. A few times it's come down, flirted with the 50-day, multiple occasions, right? But now it's really starting to trend to the upside. Part of that could be due to these earnings estimate revisions coming in. See this shelf sort of at 71, really broke out from there. So this is another stock. You could chase it a little bit, put your stops closer to the 50-day, um, I don't know what's going on in the pet business that's going to rock these guys too much. Um, I don't think there's any sort of experimental drug thing happening here where you're going to come in on Monday and the mice are all going to be dead. So I think if you put your stops down near the 50-day, decent way to chase Zoetis. I made it sound like a bar in Chicago, but I apologize. Zoets, Zoetis, I'm calling it Zoetis. That's all I got for you here today, folks, on Dave's Daily Dive. Be sure to check me out at Bartosiastics on Twitter. And then, of course, you can always hang out with us in, uh, in our chat room for, uh, for the, the videos that we do every, pretty much every day. But that's all I got for you here today. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, and we will see you all later in the week. Have a good one.